So part three of this uh, problem here on the gopher. On the first part, we solve the problem, we lay down the physics of it and um, follow one path to solving it. On the second video, we actually did the physics are all the same, obviously, but then we did a different path mathematically to solve this. And then on this last video, all I want to do is actually check our answers. So a lot of times when you do these, you're not so sure whether you did it right or wrong. You don't have the answer in front of you to check. So when you're doing a test or perhaps a, an assignment. So one thing you can do is obviously you can double check your answers by um, solving in different ways things that you already found. Okay. So remember that on the first way, on video one, we found the time first. Yeah? And then after the time, we found how long d is, which is what we're looking for, right? On the second video, we found straight what d is. Okay, if we're going straight for what d is, then from here, we can easily find what is z. Um, where's my equation one, four, sorry. Let's copy that. Okay, so we can easily find what my z is. That's just gonna be d times um, times z. What did we get? What did we get? Two hundred and thirty-one point eighty-one meters, and with that we can easily find what is time. Remember that we solved time for. Where is it over here? We had the relationship between time and the OX. The OX was thirty-five point thirty-one. So time taken is 5.12 seconds, okay? So obviously if you did both methods then you saw that they both times check out, but that's not the point of this, this third video. The third video is whether you did the <clears throat> method one or two, you could, got, you could have got these two answers. And the, the idea now is to check whether these two answers are the same, okay? So pretend that you did this one method, so you have these two answers here, and now you wanna check, or maybe you did this way here, and now you wanna check. What we can do is we can go ahead and do this equation here. What does this equation say? This equation says the following. The delta y, the delta y of the ball equals the velocity pushing it up on the y direction times the time it has to go upwards minus the gravity pushing it down times the time squared it took for the acceleration to act, right? And because we know the values of this, we have everything that we need for all the, uh, for all the unknowns, we can actually solve for time here too. And we can see if it checks out. This, the other, good reason for doing this is that remember that we disregarded one of the t's. So we had one of the t's being 5.12, but the other one we never got to finding because we divide everything by time. So this is another good exercise to see if you're not leaving anything important behind. All right, so I'll need h, and I know that h can be found by relating, where is my, this guy here. Okay, so I can, this is, D, which I have, times sine of five, negative, which equals V O Y T minus G T squared. So I can sub in all the values that I have. So this is, um, what did we get? 232.7 sine of five. This we had from the beginning too. This was 21.13. This we have 9.81. This we have in constant. So what we end up getting on this equation is that, okay, minus, 20.3 equals v o y t minus g t squared over 2. And if I take a step further, then that is the same as zoom in 4.9 t squared minus 21.3 t minus the 20.3 from h, which equals 0. And now we have a nice second degree equation that we can solve using, it's not it's t not x, so minus b 21.3 plus or minus b squared minus 4a c divided by 2a This gives me two answers. And oops, small mistake. 21.13, not three, right? That's our that's our VO Y. Cool. So that gives me T1 as being 5.12, like we found before. 
and my t2 is equal to negative 0 0.808. Okay, so like we uh, knew before we do it, as we were solving it, one of the t's would be disregarded, the t on the negative of the parabola. So on a time before the gopher hits the ball, it will fall on the time scale, it will fall on a negative time scale. Okay, so we can disregard that t2 there that we just found. And on the oops, and on the positive one, that matches exactly what we did on both, right? On both on both um solvings, right? So whether you did the first way, you got 5.12. If you did the sorry, the, that was the first the second way, and the first way 5.12 as well. Okay, so that's a just a savvy little way for you to actually check your answer, check that it made sense and all that. So if you have time to do, it's always good to just go over it and check your work, make sure that it makes sense and that if you do it some other way, you're going to find the same answer. Okay, so three, I guess, two different methods of solving it and one method of checking your answer, regardless of which of the two paths you took in the beginning. If you have questions, let me know.